behind me, a group gathers to remember the victims, survivors, and heroes of the Holocaust. Many of them were their relatives who were killed during an ugly period in history. And on this Holocaust Remembrance Day, many are standing side by side with the Jewish community. I was hidden by a Polish family after I was born. I was born in 1942 in Sandomierz, Poland. His mother, part of the underground resistance. His father spent four years in a concentration camp. He's a true survivor. I'm a survivor, a lucky survivor. 76-year-old Joseph Gontanker calls himself fortunate that for the first four years of his life, a Catholic family took him in at a time when being Jewish was made a crime. In the war, there were the perpetrators, there were the victims, there was the bystanders, and there were the upstanders. And the Jolofs were the upstanders. So that's how I survived the war. One and a half million Jewish children died in the war, and they were the most uh, susceptible. Joseph's family reunited a few months after the war. Unfortunately, most of my family, 80, 90 percent of both sides, were murdered in the Holocaust. The same happened to Vardit Feldman's extended family. Her parents survived. Their combined eight siblings didn't. I never met these people, and as a child, it was very hard. When everybody was going to their cousin's house, we had no cousins. Her father's name was Bernard. Uh, her mother's name was Ilona. She Over 100 names read out loud at Mel Lastman Square this evening at the memorial organized by the Friends of Simon Wiesenthal Center for Holocaust Studies. At the entrance, the faces and stories of terror. The six million who were killed in the Holocaust are a reminder of what hate can lead to. One of the critical messages of the Holocaust is anti-Semitism, and we said never again, and it was anti-Semitism that created this, this largest uh, genocide in human history, and so we're seeing a resurgence of anti-Semitism, um, and it's quite shocking. Just recently, there were shootings at synagogues in the U.S., most recently in San Diego, and in several New Zealand mosques. There were also explosions at churches in Sri Lanka on Easter Sunday. When you see this in society, it's a very dangerous place, not only for the Jewish community, but for the rest of society to be in. It shows that there's discontent, that there's hatred ri rising up. What are you hoping people walk away with today? Learning from one another and respecting one another and, and learning that we as humans, we all share this, this bond to live free and happy and in peace. And we should all work together to do that. 30 faith leaders in Toronto and around the world were also invited this evening to join members of the Jewish community. In a showing of solidarity, each lit a candle and said their own prayers, first individually, then all together. My message is never again will the rest of the world sit back and allow evil to flourish. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, we're all Canadian, but we're all human. Uh, and no matter what uh, faith uh, you belong to, we, we have to remember that uh, we're brothers and sisters. May 7 marks National Holocaust Remembrance Day, and a ceremony is set to take place in Ottawa. For City News, I'm Faisal Amin.